What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a special video for you. This is a friend of mine, Fred Urbanis, and um, I was uh, I was really surprised in this video. I did not know exactly Fred's story, and so it was something that we were driving along, um, actually going to tackle store to tackle store. We're in Portugal, and I was able to sort of get to know Fred and know a little bit more about him. And um, you're going to hear me say "shut up" a lot in this video because I'm just. It's surprising. There's a lot of stuff that I did not know, and I wanted to pass it along to my followers and let you guys see what's going on. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I grew up in the Bay Area of San Francisco, and, and you know, obviously back there, it's just not, fishing isn't, you just don't look at it as a professional sport, but as a kid, and you get to see it on TV, we didn't have all the channels, we just had like TNN, and, and yeah. Bassmasters was on that, you know, and, and you just, you got to watch Bill Dance fish, and Roland Martin, and, and Hank Parker, and all that stuff got me so excited. And I had a little reservoir behind our hill. I'd ride my BMX bike down there, and uh, I'd go down there and I'd try like, for, not just like one day, but for like a week with like a bait that I saw him catch a fish on on that Saturday show. Yeah. And finally catch a dang bass. One one week for one bite. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, because I had no 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 mentor. Nobody showing me what to do. So you just, just you, my you just so how what? was your like your dad I, who who like started you off probably like, my older brother time. mike i mean he he had some buddies and they got into some fishing rods um so that was the first time you'd ever like really experienced fishing yeah yeah like, my dad my dad was into sailing um he was a cable car conductor in san francisco and, and and like on the weekends he would take us to uh angel island with a sailboat um and then we'd he'd go to like the grocery store and get like some some shrimp and like wow. just like fish at the yeah. you know what I mean yeah. a little ice and he'd pack it up and, he'd, and we'd just drop down and catch crabs it was just so exciting like you don't know what you're gonna drop down and catch every yeah. now and then you catch a fish or whatever and it was like 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 dacron like it was like braided line that like was so thick with these hooks. we didn't know what it, you know, just, it is, yeah. but anyway it was just, it was it just gave me that passion young and we just hooked up and you reeled crab in or something you know and then so, we had this reservoir and my grandfather. He gave me a rod and reel combo, Zebco 33 Classic, when it first came out, and it was in like 85, 86, I don't know. Went down to the reservoir, and he gave me a box that had like split shots, and like salmon eggs, and maybe like a spinnerbait in there, and like a beetle spin, <laughs> you know, it was like yeah, just, a hodgepodge, just, just a hodgepodge of random stuff, yeah. a little stringer. And I went down to the reservoir, and all these guys had these rods on the dock, and they had little bells, and... They were all trout fishing to hold out there, and I took this, uh, the split shots, it was obvious what they did, I just pinched like three or four of them up the line, like separated them probably about that far apart. Yeah. Hooked as many salmon eggs on my hook as I could, and I casted it out there with that little thumb button, and they go to the bottom, I just start reeling it in. In like third cast, ever, ever. I catch a freaking bass on no salmon egg. Way. Yes, dude. And everyone on the dock was freaking out. And you know, as a kid, like, as a kid, you don't, you don't really know Nobody ever like even knows who you are. Like they'll see you, oh, the little kid, in. you know. But then, but but until you've done something to impress somebody, yeah. at that age, that's when the passion hit me. Like that's yeah. when it hit me. Like I did something really cool for the first time in my life. Damn. You know what I mean? Yeah, like and, really and, cool. and and everyone on the dock was just so excited. And that's to this day really the only bass I've ever kept. <laughs> that's uh, which, so which, freaking you awesome. You know, but but then I was like. Now I'm starting to watch it on TV, you know, the magazines, all that stuff. Like, I just wanted to learn more and more and more about it. And, like I said, I'd go down to these lakes, and it was like, one day, I'd catch a fish out of an entire week of going fishing. And it might just be one bass I caught on a spinnerbait that week. But it, in class, I'd be listening to the teacher talk, and I kept thinking about how, how that fish bit that bait and how it pulled. And just, you know what I mean? Like, the, my Super mind was bad. so set on wanting to catch a fish. And then I learned, you know how to catch bass easier using live night crawlers and stuff like that. And, you know, you're just fun fishing from the bank. It's so not what like, was, like, your first tournament? So, first fast forward, yeah, I was. I got a job at a tackle store when I was 15 years old at Hogan Sporting Goods in Pleasant Hill, California. And um, these guys came in. They were part of a club, American Bass Anglers. Um, Dick Weir and uh, uh, just um, Jerry Beatty. These guys, they, they kind of took me under their wing. They're like, hey, why don't you come to our Fuddruckers restaurant and come to the meeting and you can fish one of our club tournaments and uh 15 15 years yeah. old and i'm like so i'm like all right cool i'm gonna i'm gonna do this so i, I go there and i'm super nervous and you know i don't i've never been on a bass boat never no 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 this is more like like fast forward to 18 because i hadn't been on a bass boat until i was 18 years old 18 yeah so then at 18 years old i, I joined this club 
and I go out there and I and I, I draw actually one of my buddies who uh, I met through the tackle store Tony and unfortunately we had motor issues and we were at Berryessa and we didn't really get to fish that day so I kind of for like it but it was still watch. super cool because I, yeah, totally I got to float around on a bass boat see the troll motor it just come back to the ramp you know yeah. whatever but I'm like I can't wait for the next one it was like you know one tournament a month so the next month rolls around I go and we go up to uh, Lake Sonoma and I got really good at the bank like where I grew up fishing flipping the jigs into the reeds and stuff so I wanted to pitch a jig and and, and that was when they were split shot and it was a big deal back yeah, then big time. and so I was with this guy Dick Weir and super cool dude and he wanted to drag a split shot and I was like I saw bushes and I pitched that jig as far as I could out there and I I, I just kept catching like three to four pounders. Like I was catching, like <laughs> I ended up second them. place from the back of the boat. You were smashed. But you, you competed against the guys in the front and everybody else. So. No. Yeah, way. yeah, yeah. So it was. So I had a second on my first one. Then I went to Clear Lake, and the same thing. Like I did the same thing with the back. I, I dragged a big lizard and caught seven and a half pounder. Took third big bass or something. So now I'm like, dude, I want to, I want to run the front of the boat. Like this I'm, is like you're 18 years old. Yeah. The like first few tournaments, you get like the boat. You're like killing it. Yeah. You're, 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 you're just chomping the bit to go out there. You want to learn, and you already are having success in the back of the, back of the boat. Yeah. It's I mean, it was, like, pretty quick, and I was like, I got to get a boat. Well, I've been working, and I've been saving my money. We didn't have – dude, growing up, we, we did not have money. Like, yeah. like, my football coach had to chip in for me to go to football camp kind of thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I want – you know. Yeah, I it, it was one of those deals, and, and my parents worked hard for their living, you know. Absolutely. And, um, and so, anyway, I uh, – I saved up this money. I, I bought I bought my first bass boat. I was 18 years old. I saved up three grand. I went to the bank, took a loan for a vehicle. Didn't say what it was for. I said it was a vehicle loan for $3,500. And I bought this this old Starfire Skeeter and immediately jumped into Pro-Am and finished ninth place throwing a uh, bubblegum fluke and a spinnerbait on the Delta. And uh, dude, it, it won three grand. No. So I basically like won, legitimately I basically won right. my loan, right? Now, of course, I didn't pay off the loan. I kept that three grand to kind of keep filtrating into the yeah. uh, passion of fishing and tournaments. And it was like, dude, I just I just felt like I was better than, I could learn so much. And I was, you know what I mean? Just, you had that confidence. Yeah, you, you, you get that vibe, especially when you have so much success, like starting it yeah. and like doing well. And then you get into that and you're like, dude, I'm, I, I can do this. Yeah, and it was really, you know, I've only fished from the back of the boat, those two tournaments plus that one where we had motor issues. So yeah. Other than that, I jumped in the front, and I and I've never looked back since. Holy! But dude, on my 19th birthday, there was a there was a pro am, and now I fished with my buddies, team terms. I had some really good friends that I'm best friends with today, and we fished together. This guy Ted Perry taught me swim bait fishing, like all the stuff that I like doing was because of my buddies. You know how it is. You just you've got good friends, and you got you know yeah, like, just you, you push each other. Yeah, absolutely. And so I learned all these cool techniques, and I was taking them to the tournament scenes as, as a kid, and I, and I was cashing checks, you know, not necessarily winning, but just doing really well. Anyway, on my 19th birthday, um, I convinced my dad, like, I, all I want is help with the entry fee to this tournament. It was like $350 entry fee, I remember, and that was a big a deal, lot dude. Of money back then, back yeah. then, it was a big, big deal, and he goes. And I think he went to Reno and won some cash or something. But he's like, I'm, I'm going to cover you for your birthday present. And I'm like, really? And it was like the coolest thing ever. And the wind picked up. And I got this old school wiggle wart bite. Like like back then, right? Yeah, like it like <laughs> probably wasn't even like, like they made them still. <laughs> and so um, I, it was my 19th birthday. I get out there. And I remember Ish Monroe at the docks. Like I told him where I was going to go and what I was going to do. And he goes, well, make sure you take, you know, this, this connection slew, go this way. Don't go down and go across the track. It's going to be windy, rough, you're fighting the tide. And he, he was dialed on that. And I, and I had a 16-foot Starfire that really wasn't in, in the best of shape. Yeah. And um, it was a wet ride. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I uh, was running down the lake. I was running down the river. Um, and my compartment lid kind of wiggled off. And so I stopped the boat and I... I put it under my feet and I could see my tackle and stuff. It's like when I'm driving, it's just, there's no, there's a little mill section and it's just missing a compartment lid. I'm still running down there, right? It's where you stand while you're fishing, You're right? hitting big waves. Oh, like, oh, dude, it was just... <laughs> and then all of a sudden my motor just... I, get, I turned the corner into Frank's track and it was just... It's the roughest I've ever seen it. Still to this day? To this day, on the, on the Delta. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I mean, not like like Erie, you know right, what I mean? But, but you know what I mean out there. Yeah, with a little 16-footer, yeah, it was yeah. bad. And, uh, dude, it... it, it it filled up with water. I looked at my battery, my engine wouldn't turn over. I'm like, what the world? And the boat just kind of rolled upside down. And, and I, all I could think was save your rods, save your gear. That's like, so I grabbed my rods and everything. 
my co-angler, we, we, I said, he goes, what do we do? I, I said, I think we got to swim. So we, we jumped in and man, he started taking his life jacket off because he couldn't move. And I'm like, dude, you got, no, you got to leave that on, you know? Yeah. But like, I, like in high school, we had just graduated high school, you know, a year before we had to tread water for 45 minutes to graduate high school. That's insane. So like, like that, that is insane. Like 45 minutes of treading water. Yes. That is like mandatory. Unless you had a medical condition or you had you know, a note from a doctor or a parent saying you couldn't do it or whatever, but for, for everyone else. Majority of everybody yeah. else. So we had that one and, and it, it was good because it taught me to swim. I was yeah. in good shape back then, of course, but I didn't realize it was all to prepare me for this incident. Wow. And so I let go of my rods and of course I got line tangled around me and braid even you know and I, I, I broke it all free I don't know how and um, so I had all my rods gone I grabbed the guy and I I swim him to this little island we get to the island and then I pick him up and I put him over my shoulder because he's exhausted and I get him to the other side where it was calmer yeah and there's a boat trolling I could see him in the fog like trolling on the other side what time of year for is stripe. this is it November water yeah. temperature is 55 56 degrees cold like like hypothermia cold Bro. and i had the crazy adrenaline back then and i i swam to that boat i swam to the swam boat swam to the boat and i and they're like what are you doing i was like dude i sunk my boat out in the track and they're like what and i said can you give us a ride to the to um uh, you know to the marina up there and they, they did they gave you know we got in the boat and whatever and then it went like glass calm of course it went glass calm and i wanted to fish they found my boat they flipped it dude it was it's was awful i'll share some of the photos on social but yeah, it was I'll like it. it was crazy so so then this is you know my 19th birthday well november's still good i, I wanted to be a pro snowboarder too so it was like fishing snowboarding like I, I drove all the way up to uh to boreal which is about three hour drive from my house and uh took my brother never got to see me snowboard and I, uh, I it, it was an iced over day up at Boreal, so it was like terrible, you know, conditions for the park. They closed it all off. They had caution tape around it, and I said, "Oh no, no, no!" I said, "Mike, you gotta watch me." So, dude, I, 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 I jump the caution tape. I get down. I hit this 40-foot tabletop, full steam ahead. I mean, I, I had the faster I went, the more control I had. You know, we didn't wear helmets back then, which is crazy. And um, like that wasn't even part of snowboarding. Really. No, no, no. We were just, that's we were dumb, dude. And I did a tail grab 720. I mean, I was that was like my my trick, you know. I just love doing 720s and stuff. And it was just, you know, I I landed it. It looked like I'll come back in. My this is all coming from my brother because I don't remember a thing. Apparently, I hit my head on the bottom lip. I passed out. I was knocked out for four hours. Concussion. You know, just like really really serious head injury. And um, I woke up in the Truckee Hospital. I missed the fun ride on the back of the wow. <laughs> snowmobile and all that. And like, I don't remember any of My brother told me this. It was pretty scary. But Not just So now I come back to where I was making spinner baits, dude. Get this. I was working for a company called Viper. They had to change the name to VPR back then. Um, and we were making spinner baits. I made spinner baits for Gary Dobbins. And I actually made the spinner baits that he won. He won three bass boats in five weeks. And I made those spinner baits that helped him win some of those bass boats. So that was really cool. Uh, but I got fired from. I was the only time I've ever been fired. You know, I got fired from that job because I played hooky to go snowboarding, and I couldn't. My thumb was broken, so I couldn't make spinner baits fast enough. Shut up. So I messed up the whole yeah the whole assembly operation. line. The whole assembly line was on me because I made all the baits right. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> don't Gary. So. Oh Gary, big. Yeah. He, he never body. got any more baits from me, but he did sponsor <laughs> me down the road, which is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. But you know, it's like, just, I, it was like, I went from, I, I've had, I've been at the bottom many yeah. a times, many, many so a like times. So like after the snowboard incident, you're like, All I right. got no boat, I no got boat, no tackle, no tackle, no job, no job. Well, no, I still worked at the tackle store part-time. Okay, you did part, you did tackle store. I just went back to the tackle store and worked more hours there. So I, you know, I, I did that and I was going to school and then uh, I met a sales rep guy, um, Bill Reynolds, who's Daiwa. And I got a job as a sales rep for Daiwa, as his, as his assistant. So that was cool. I got to work trade shows and get to meet people in the business. Yeah. And then that kind of escalated to, you know, working for um, Angelo Pucci, if you've heard of P-Line. Yep. They had a, a distributorship called Universal Telescopic. They gave me a job while I was still going to college at, at DBC, Daiwa Valley College. 
we did that, and then Callum Western Sales wanted to pick me back up because there was an opening in Southern California, so I moved to Huntington Beach, and I worked for there for a little bit, and then Akuma met me, and they wanted me to work for Akuma, you know, Rod yeah. Real, so I worked for Akuma um, as assistant sales manager, so, so I kind of had a big still down in SoCal? In SoCal, yeah. I, I lived in Huntington Beach at the time, and I would I had a little apartment there, and I'd have to drive 55 miles to Ontario, where, the, where the, yep. they're out of, and it was a two-hour drive each way, dude. It sucked. But I, but when I took that job, they gave me the time to fish the first ever start series out west. So that was when when FLW was offering the first, you know, ten thousand dollar payout to like fiftieth place. There were two hundred boat fields. The payouts were really, really good. Yeah. Um, so I took that job and did that Western ever Se- and actually ever start series and actually qualified the FLW tour. Well, that same fall. I did the Bassmaster Opens. When I qualified for the tour, I quit. I did the Bassmaster Opens and qualified to the Bassmaster Tour. So uh, it was, it, it, I actually had a couple opportunities to make nationals at that point. So I, I, I chased them, you know. And uh, is, at this point, how old are you? Uh, 24. 24 years old. Yeah, 24 years old. And then when you got to like to the Everstart aspect of things, you were like. So I qualified to the FLW Tour. Uh, you get so sponsorship during that time? Well, Akuma actually, like, Gave me an eight thousand or yeah eight thousand dollar sponsorship to wrap my boat and um, I started this whole deal. Yeah, I kind of started. That was my sponsorship, and I because I had been a sales rep, I also was able, I had made relationships with like Power Pro with Conrad that owned it before you know got yeah. flash model. So I I had I had some good relationships. Got these little sponsorships, snag proof. I had like you know two hundred dollar a month deal with them. You know just little deals like, but back then I mean those were probably good deals but you, know? you understood the industry too. i did understand i had a foundation of the business i understood i had a ba- i had a, a backup plan I, my backup plan was i could always go back and become a sales rep yep. back then you know so i had an opportunity I, I got rid of everything um apartment all the all the liabilities that cost me and i just basically lived in my vehicle very little money chased it but i won just enough to keep me afloat yeah and um flw that first year <laughs> at uh, champlain come to the last term of the year i'm not doing that great in the point there's 200 boats right so i'm like around the hundredth place mark in the in the, in the in the angler of the year i had a lot to learn i probably jumped the gun because i didn't know the lakes we didn't have there really wasn't like social media or internet or yeah, anything. There, you know the research the, the stuff, learning curve was way way slower back dude, in the day it was, it there was, was not enough information no. out there heck it was new just a, like a, a jig would come along like a football yeah. jig and it would just take 10 years for it to kick off exactly because a couple guys would have in their pocket for years exactly and they keep and, a secret and I did have a lot like I was nail weight and Senkos back then oh so you knew like, dude I knew a lot of really cool tricks that guys did not have a clue yes so I had those little tricks that, that kept me getting checks you know but yep. um, Champlain I actually and I had an older boat I did not have a new boat I, I, I you know I never really had so I had this older Skeeter and um, at Champlain it got really windy and rough and I had a four and a half pounder jump out of my live well in Sissicoy Bay on day two. Now this is one of those $200,000 tournaments and I'm doing good. This is, I had like 15 minutes of fish. I catch one more like a, I ended up m- missing the, uh, I made it back in. Oh dude, it was so rough. I ran through a wave, <laughs> came out, my callan was gone off oh my motor. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, sounded different. I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, but it's so rough. I made it back in. I missed the top 10 by two spots. And a four and a half jumped out of my live well. Are you kidding? Yeah, dude. Like, so here's so the worst part. you're living paycheck to paycheck. Paycheck to paycheck. At that point in time, you're just like, dude, dude like, I had a $200,000 win in my freaking realm. Like, I could have won this thing. Like, that's how good I was catching on a frog when, like, nobody threw frogs. Nobody threw frogs? No, that was before like, Rojas ever threw a frog. Shut up. As a matter of fact, he's, I could go on about that deal. It's a whole other story. Anyway, I, uh, I missed requalifying the FLW Tour by one point. Shut up. One point. That fish not only cost me that tournament, but one point. Oh, my I missed requalifying the FLW. So let's go check out this tackle shop. Go. Part two. We're coming Next. back at you. We're going, we're going tackle shop hunt. All right, so we stopped the tackle shop. Back in the car. It's raining sideways. And we're getting the rest of the story. So we left it at Champlain. You had this bass jump out. Cost you the potential tournament. You ended up just missing out on the cut. And then you missed... Recall for the FLW Tour by one point? One point, one point. Yep, yep. I, and I got notice of uh, not requalifying pretty immediately. And uh, I was really bummed out because I pretty much, you know, I mean, I 
I quit my jobs. I, I put everything on the road. I lived in my truck. I mean, I did everything I could, and it's like, okay, now I've failed twice in life. Like, this is crazy, and I'm, I'm 25 years old at this time, you know, and I'm just, I don't know. I, I never wanted, I never thought of giving up. I just was bummed. It's like, okay, we're going back to the drawing board. Like, what's our option? But I got invited to this really cool international tournament, the Euro Cup. Yeah. I got to go to the Euro Cup. So I went out there, and I hung out with, um, you know, Ike and Ellie, Byron, Ish was there. I mean, all, a lot of West Coast friends. Uh, I think Brett Height um, and Kelly Jordan was there. I think huh. Scott Suggs might have been there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, Scott was there. So it was cool. It was a good group of guys. We all had fun. But I remember just sitting down at one of the dinners, and, I, and, I, and I'm, like, telling Kelly Jordan, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I FLW tour, you know, I... Like, I fell out of it. Like yeah. I, I tried it and I fell out. And, I, and he's like, "Well, why don't you just get back in?" I said, "Well, how am I gonna get back? It's already like the yeah, end of the season, right?" And he goes, um, "So we just had the U.S. Open. I just came from the U.S. Open, sleeping on my boat during practice, dude. Like, dude, I went from yeah. like I just been, you went from like I was struggling, dude. It's, sort of, it's, yeah. just been, it's so rock bottom. It's not even funny, dude. I got an old boat. I don't have nothing new, and." Um, I, I, I go out there and it was a really cool opportunity and I just just living life, you know. And yeah. uh, Kelly said, Well why don't you just go fish the, the Northern Everstart series? I'm like, well, where are they at? And he said, uh, I think you got like Detroit River. Oh, you'll love lacrosse. It's, it's Mississippi River. It, it's probably a lot like your Delta and then uh, whatever else went to the UP, Upper Bay, yeah. uh, Little Dinoc, and uh, uh, Michigan. And then back to Detroit or something like that. It was like, you know. So anyway, I went back and I looked into it. And I, they hadn't even started the series yet. It was like a fall series. So I'm like, oh, heck, I'll jump in. I jumped in. I jumped in them. And I'm like, I got no money. I got, I'm got. i like, well, how am I going to pull this off, right? Yeah. So I go up to Detroit. And I, and I take a dude with me from California. So we get split costs. Is yeah. heard. And um, Is was like cool just laid back not a worry in the world he did like safari windows for Volkswagens. he was an ex-pro skateboarder Dang. half pipe skater like cool dude right just, just As a matter of fact, we called it the is rig back before it was the nico rig really? because he used to is he used to you know nail weight baits back in the 90s you know and it was like so here we are 2000 i don't know five and um is is with me on the road we go out we go to uh detroit and it was, we went out to Erie out of Elizabeth Park in my boat, and he's beating me. He's like, I don't see land anymore. Turn around, turn around. And it's rough, and I'm, and everyone's like, you gotta go to Peely Island, you know? We turned around. <laughs> <laughs> so we dude. never even made it, dude. Like, like there's no way, like 35 miles. Yeah, by, like, we didn't, we, we were out there in the bathroom. And I'm in a 19 footer back then. It wasn't like oh I had a 21. Dude. I, mean, I, I upgraded from a 16 to a 19, you know? It's like, dude, I'm not. I'm not that guy. I don't have a new boat. I don't have, you know, so, um, yeah, anyway, I, I had like little pinpoint graphs, black and white. Oh my God. <laughs> Bro, so I go back out into Detroit River and we mess around there, catch some fish on a spinnerbait. And then I, we launched in St. Clair like the next day. And um, I found a little spot with some fish I catch, you know, I thought, but um, caught some on break walls. Just, you know, really just scrapping. Fishing in Detroit. Yeah, right? just first, first tournament. I, anyway, fast forward I go out there and I ended up like every day I got off the water I had to go to I had, I had to buy screws and take my drill and pull the rubber rail and drill in drill back oh in. dude put it back all your rubber oh, back oh yeah there, put the yeah. rubber rail back on and, um, you've never experienced water. that never water? dude I'm like this boat's gonna sink <laughs> again I've already <laughs> sunk one I'm like I'm this is just you know oh, so so I get out there and um, I remember, this is so weird because I remember like it was so rough and I was going to that Miracle Mile area, just, oh my gosh, dude. Just, I fished St. Clair. And um, I finally started figuring out some fish on a spinnerbait. And I'm like, okay, cool. I, you know, I, that was cool, but it was too late in the game. And I just, I ended up 65th out of 200 in that tournament. It wasn't a great start. It wasn't a great one, but it wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible, but it was like not the great. But but especially four, when you're when you're, you're like yeah. you're, you're pinching you're, pennies to pinching make it all pennies, work. Pinching pennies, dude. Staying yeah. at the nights in with like four guys and getting, you know, knocked on the door at like three in the morning by you know, trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just <laughs> you're like yeah. Dead. I'm literally sleeping on the floor, dude. Like they wasn't even with other guy. Anyway, it was like that bad of a deal, but. So anyway, the, the, we go up to... Okay, so after that tournament, we're eating at like one of those buffets. 
and I just felt like I cracked my ribs or something that rough ride, and I, yeah. I couldn't even really eat. And uh, uh, like, I think it was Melinda Mize or somebody was yeah. like, we were all we were all staying like together, you know, and, and she's like, I'm taking you to the hospital. You're something's wrong with you. I'm like, I'm fine. So we, anyway, went to the hospital. Tr- turned out I had shingles. Bro, at 25 years old, shingles, and it was from like stress, probably eating too much Taco Bell and. <laughs> you know all this crap. God. So now I got like this shingles, rash. shingles, bro. At Twenty five. Yeah, they even the doctors were like, "Well, you caught it early enough. Good thing you came in." They gave me a cream. They're like, "You might be able to shake it in a couple weeks if you're lucky." Well, I had like one week off, and then and then we went to um, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Mississippi River. So I I had to go to like Walgreens and buy like white t-shirts. All I could wear was white because it hurts so bad. Um, there's like a you know it's like a it feels like broken glass on you if you, yep. if you ever get it's bad it's it's horrible. Anyway, I we just floated around, staying at cheap cheap hotels. It, it was a group of us, so it was you know, it was all good. Is is and I really just kind of hung out and anyway, we went to uh, lacrosse and I practiced for maybe I was hurting so bad, I only practiced for like two out of five days, and um, I found a couple little areas where where I could throw a frog and get some bites. But dude, I'm trying to set the hook and with the shingles on that side, like mm. dude, it hurt so bad. And I remember going to the um, I didn't have enough money. We had our our balance going into little bay to knock was due right after the, that tournament in mississippi so I, and i told chris jones at the meeting i said chris dude I, i'm done dude like i just i i'm not in good health i've i'm broke i don't have and he, and he goes hold on fred wait a minute don't worry about that right now how are you doing this week what do you think you can catch i said chris and you know doc talk Yep. Doc Talk, everyone's 18 pounds in my day and this yeah, and that. Dude, I'm not I never saw anything like that. Yeah. And I said, Chris, if I'm lucky, I'll get 12 to 14 pounds a day. And he goes, Fred, he just looked me right in the eye, pointed at me, he said, you get 14 pounds a day, I will see you on championship day. Meters. And I'm like, dude, it was like, like the whole world closed in on me. Like I saw nothing but black and darkness. Damn. I saw the light, dude, for the first time, bro. He said that. And he said, he said that and I saw light, gave me in. hope, dude. Dude, he gave me hope. Chris Jones, man. I love that guy. And uh, anyway, dude, I go out there the first day. I get into the area, and it was like overcast and calm. And I get back where I was going to go to the pads, and it was kind of like a couple little isolated patches. I pick up my black frog. And, <laughs> dude, I had like 15 pounds. Day one. Day one in like an hour and a half. Oh. So I got out of there. Dude, I even have a full tank of gas in my boat, bro. He's going to own Oh, my God. God. So I, I go on. I go back up to the ramp, and I, and I just kind of waited out that day. Anyway, I'm in fourth place. Got 200 boats in that tournament. The next day, I go out. Man, uh, and you caught them quick. So you're dude, like, I caught them quick the first jacked. day. Nobody saw me. Nobody knew where I was at because they thought I was close to the ramp, right? Because yeah. that's where I sat the rest of the day. And I really never caught another fish. And... um. I might have drop shot at a few on wing dams back then, yeah, but it wasn't like nothing, you know. Yeah. But it was, so anyway, the second day rolls up, I get down there, my first fish is like a four and a half. Oh, and I'm like, like a oh, giant. Yeah. Then, then, like, giant on then the I don't river. get any more bites, and north wind comes, starts cooling down, I catch like a two and a half. And I'm like, it's it's 1230 now, and I got two fish. And there was only one other spot I found, it was in pool nine. No. At so noon, you're, bro. You're an eight? And then you got a lock down. Uh, so at noon, yeah. So I go to the lock. No. Dude, I have to go to the oh, yeah. lock. What time are you doing? I was in last flight for like 3.40, okay. 3.45 or something like Still. that. I go noon. down to the lock. At noon. At noon. The lock master's like 12.30 at this point before I even like started heading down there. So I get down there. Lock master said, hey, the whole field that locked down is locking up. We got a, a three barge meters. coming in. I don't know what that means. Yeah. He goes, you're not going to want to do it. Anyway, um... The lock, you know, he puts me in. I went down anyway. When the lock opened up, the whole field's down there. And I was in fourth the first day, and they're telling me to turn around. They're like, I see guys doing this with their hands. You know, and I'm, I just ran by them all and poof, just kept going. Just go to your spot. I just you knew you had only so much time. Dude, I got over this little little, little sandbar and threw my frog. And, dude, I, and I know it wasn't three casts, but it seemed like th- it might have been ten. Yeah. But I caught like three, almost three pounders in a row. Bro. Dude, so I turn around, I come back. Shut Guess up. what? Guess what? Now this is all the way at Minnesota Slough. So I. So you had to run all the yeah, way I back got, up. I got gas money from my co anglers why I had a full tank of gas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it was one of those deals, right? No. So, so dude, I, you can't make this up, dude. It's craziest story. So I come back and I'm happy now. I got, I've got, um, you know, a good five fish limit, and 
I'm content. I did what I had to do. Am I going to make it back to weigh-in? I have no idea. I get back to that lock, and the barge is going in. I mean, obviously, it's, it's happening. I got to wait it out. And I just sat there and waited at the bottom of that lock. And it, dude, it didn't. It just... I don't know. I was at peace with myself. It just worked. If this was the last tournament in my life, I was at peace because I made the decisions to do something that kind of worked. Yeah. I might not make it back, but at least I got you, you a live well full of good ones. Yep. Dude, I made it back with 30 seconds. No, you did not. Yes. Made the cut. They start the weights over back then. So I go back to where I caught the first day. I catch almost a six pounder. Come on, Fred. Dude, I catch a five, four, a six. Dude, it was five something. It was almost six. It was like big fish the whole tournament on a frog. Oh I catch like 16 and a half pounds. That is easy. I've that got a freaking big lead going into the final day. And then I just, it, I had like four fish the last hour on the final day and I caught the last one. It got me to like 11 and a half and I won that tournament, dude. So I went for On your last dime. The last dime, dude. Like, last dime. Last dime, dude. You won the derby. I won the derby. And I drove his all the way back to California. You gotta be kidding me. It was unbelievable, dude. I had got 10 grand. I won a new boat. And uh, I came all, I Caution. dropped him off. Risk of skidding. Ooh, that's new. Yeah, it's a risk of skidding. Skidding. <laughs> skidding. Hydroplaning. Hydroplaning is skidding. <laughs> so, so you go back to California. So I go back to California. You still have drop a more, I drop his off. Yeah, I got like a couple days. And I turn around, drive back up to the Little Bay to knock. And it's super rough. And again, I got the same boat. It's not like I got the new boat to yeah. start using. I, it was a certificate, so you got to order. I got the order in and all that stuff, I think. when I, I don't remember. That, that, that's not even important. But anyway, I got, um, I drive back out there. And, um, <laughs> oh, dude. So you drive so, back so, out the Ben Bader Knock. Yeah, dude. I got to rewind something, though. Dude, so yeah, get this, bro. Dude, at lacrosse, first day of practice. Yeah. Never been there before. Is backs me up down the ramp, the yeah. one across the street from Veterans Park, yeah. and he jackknifes it, and it goes off the off the ramp. And I said, "Dude, you got to straighten it up." When he went to pull it up, it went, it got stuck. So I said, "Hold on." So I got in the truck and I gunned it. When I pulled it up, I ripped the trailer off the truck. Shut up. So the trailer was still in the water. <laughs> Shut up. I swear, dude. I, pulled, I was like, "Oh my god!" There was a people. There were you people. You ripped on, it off. So it was like yes, literally. And there was a couple on their honeymoon there on the dock and we all got in the water and pulled the trailer up i duct taped the tongue and drove it across the bridge by duct tape and they put a new tongue on it the service trailer so thank goodness for them but anyway that was that was <laughs> that was crazy like dude like it, it, and i remember them saying you'll probably win this tournament with that kind of luck <laughs> no i did win it but anyway so we go to little bay to knock and get like a couple days of practice it was so rough scary i fished like all these little lakes you know i just drove around fished little lakes and stuff that were inland and caught a bunch of bass. Just got the confidence. Dude, I ended up making the final day in that tournament. And I didn't fish out of sight of where we took off. And um, I actually was in fourth, I think, fourth place going to the final day of that one. I ended up eighth. I didn't catch a limit that final day. But um, so I made another, you know, really good check. I don't know, eight grand, something like that. And uh, so you had like, so you had two then, really good so tournaments. Then, now you're like. Then we go back to Detroit for the last one. But and now you had I had a tough one there, but yeah. then you like you had at least an idea like what was Dude, going this down. is the story. This story even gets even crazier, bro. So then I go to Detroit, first day of tournament, dude. I'm in 25th out of 200, and guess who's leading AOI? You. Yeah. No way. Yeah. As of that day, I was leading AOI. After day one. After day one of the tournament, I was 25th out of 200 because I figured out how to catch him on spinner bait after all that crap. After having two top oh. tens, I mean, I won one and a top eight, you know, 65th, a win and an eight, and now the first day I'm in 25th, so at that moment, that point, I'm leading the points. Dude, we didn't even have GPS, like, dude, that's how bad, that's how long this was, right? I knew nothing about these lakes. So you just literally But my got, confidence was there. I knew but you, well, you had, you, you're, you're right, that's where, like, your confidence level's there, your momentum of everything that you're doing, yeah. everything's clicking. Dude, your mind's right. I'm back on the FLW Tour. That's all I cared about. I'm back yeah. on the FLW tour. I'm back. after failing the year before. I'm back one 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 try. Day two rolls around. Gnarly wind. I drew Dave Simmons, who was the Yamaha at the time. He was like Yamaha, Yamaha Pro Staff yeah. dude. And we're running across the lake down there. And and where I caught him, it was too rough to fish my boat. It took forever to get there. So I run over to the West Bank. So let me just rewind a couple of days of practice. Yeah. There was a day where it got windy like that, and I went down that bank. Um, 
Oh, 10 Mile. You've seen the movie 8 Mile, Dave. You know, we all know that. There's a little hump out there. Well, I was going down the hump out there with a spinnerbait. And that's pretty much what I glued in my hand after that first time we were there. And this dude is in the water. Doing like, I thought he was doing water aerobics way offshore in a storm like we got right now. I'm like, what is this dude doing? And I kind of like threw my spinnerbait towards him. I caught like a three pound smallmouth. So I hit, I hit the, you know, the pinpoint. Yes, we had GPS. I remember that, but it was black and white. It wasn't like it wasn't like detailed yes, mapping, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. So it just had like open water, and I hit the, the, the I had one mark there, and uh, so I laughed. I mean, I, I the dude like looked at me. I kind of gave him a wave. He just stared at me. His arms under the water didn't didn't do much. I thought this is really weird, but he was he was definitely moving like this. So I thought he was just working out, you know? Yeah. I just moved on. That was practice. Day two, I'm like, I'm gonna go over where I had that spinnerbait fish. Yeah. I go over there and Dave Simmons, I'm almost to that mark and Dave Simmons goes, dude, you got to turn around. I think I saw a dead body. I'm like, what do you mean? And I saw a dead sturgeon. Yeah. Like the tournament before up the river. So I'm like, that was probably just a dead sturgeon. Yeah. He goes, no, yeah, I think you need to turn around. So I went around. It was right where that dude was and it was a dead body with a rope around his neck. Floating. Shut up. So dude, here I am, 25th. You're leading the hanger of the year. And I find dead body. Oh my so there, god! It, it, there's a, actually a coast guard right up the ways there. You know you what I'm talking about. There, you, you know where the coast. So I run over to the coast guard. I tell them I actually hit the man overboard button on that way. Uh, you know, I was a little body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pin, pinpoint grass, dude. Anyway, I go over there, and uh, the guy goes, uh, "All right, well, you, you know, wait, show us what." It, 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 they recognized the tattoos. They knew it was like. Like some mafia guy. or something like they knew the situation but they weren't giving me any details i didn't care i was so petrified i was so scared took him there dude i didn't even catch a fish that day dude i blanked i came in with nothing i still made the tour though no you did not yeah, i still made the flw oh tour. my Thank god gosh. i made it but i lost angler here but i dude what I, in the world i could not have made that story up dude i'm I telling tried. you that, that is my life bro and then i go back home and now I want to, you know, I, I'm, I'm also fished the Bassmaster Tour, which before was the Elite, yeah. right? So I did that. And that was just not really, there was not much money in it. At that point in time. At that point. The guys that were sponsored made money, but the, I didn't have that. Yep. So I, I went back home, and not only did I make the FLW Tour, I went and fished the Opens and took second at Shasta, ninth on the Delta, and anyway, I made the Bassmaster Elites. So, I, so I won another boat. So you, I won a hundred grand in four months. Everything just started to roll. All in that, in it that like, fall, I won a and it from was negative to a hundred. And you felt like when the skies opened up, was Chris Jones told Chris you? Chris Jones, fourteen pounds, hundred percent. That was if like that the didn't first happen, crack of light. If that didn't happen, I'd be probably a sales rep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nice. Hopefully, you know. I mean, if, if, and then all that stuff happened, and then he wins his tournament on Lake Murray. Yeah. He's got, he, catch him on, he, he was Dude, a frog man. Yeah. Well, that, well, even before that, I won the major for he a quarter million. Yeah. yeah so yep. it was like. I had a second. I had four seconds in twelve months with bass, and then won the major, and then won the Murray, and then yeah. I mean, then you know, all this stuff went down. And boom, all it all boom, happened boom, at the right boom, time. Boom, boom was born. <laughs> I guess you could say I don't know. That's nuts. But yeah, I mean, I made it off of just that's one of the hard work, stories. It is. Dedication, give glory to God. I mean, there's just you know, some things just if you don't quit and you keep. Knocking on that door, there will be opportunities. I promise. I've always, I listen, you know that. I've always respected you. I've always been like, man, Boomin was a good dude. But man, that story—that's something else. Thanks, that bro. is something else. Like, I'm not gonna lie. That one right there is pretty special to hear. You know, there's a lot of things we all. I feel like everybody goes through a little bit of trials and tribulation, figuring out life, and then, but like, you know, all that going down the way it did, man. That's 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 it's, that's, it's nuts. Yeah. It, you know, I, I hadn't won a lot of tournaments, but I've had a good enough career to keep me going. And um, I've always done my own thing. I've always, you know, just kind of kept to myself, you know, and just yeah. try what works for me. But, I mean, obviously, I, I probably need to work a little bit harder after my last season. I just, no, with you, family, you know, that's the thing, too. You know, you get, I got a family now, and... and and there's, you know, yeah, you when, know. I, when I, back then I fished for myself, that was all that mattered to me was, yeah. was me. I was selfish. I, 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 I mean, and you have to be, you, you have, have to be, be. Yeah. you have to be, to be successful at anything. You have to, 
put yourself first. If yeah. you don't do that, you're missing out. You really are, because you're you're not. Yeah. So anyway, then it then I started getting sponsors. Started working for the sponsors. Right? I did things for the sponsors, and then family, and then it it is all about the family. Like this is why I'm doing things, you know, for them. And and now my kids are growing up and. The burden's not as bad on Julie as it is yeah. now. So now I'm just like, dude, I'm like a little kid again. I'm, yeah. I feel like I'm not a 19-year-old wanting to do it all over again. You know Dang. what I mean? So I'm out here dude, hanging out with the freaking right. best in the sport. And we're just having fun. And, that, and, that, time, and we're learning and, and we're learning Fred's story. And that's yeah, um, that's the stuff you, know, you guys don't get to see behind the scenes. It's something that's impactful. It's all these stories make up uh, who we are as fishermen. Yeah. And um, that's uh, inspirational, man. It really it is. Thanks, a lot of people, A lot of people out there right now. They're going through something in life, and, and it might be uh, tough, And but you, you listen to the stories like that, and positive things happening to good people, man, and it's it's inspiration. Bro. Thanks, brother. Absolutely, bro.